welcome back to Free Media. I'm Bhatia Angar Sargon. And I'm Ravi Suave. Well, the ladies of The View are all in for Biden, despite mounting concerns about his age and mental acuity, with Whoopi Goldberg going so far as to say she would even vote for him if, uh, well, I'll just let her explain it. I don't care if he's pooped his pants. <laughs> I don't care if he can't put a sentence together. Show me he can't do the job. And then I'll say, okay, maybe it's time to go. Now, he had a bad night the first time that he went out and deba debated with um, Kamala Harris. And everybody wanted him to quit then and say, you can't talk to women like this. Are you doing this wrong? You're doing that wrong. He came back, said, you know what? I got it. And gave four years. So, yeah, I have poopy days all the time. Meanwhile, Sonny Hostin tried to reassure voters that Kamala Harris is standing at the ready. It would be dishonest for us to look at his record as a senator, which is a darn good record, and say that that is the same man that we are looking at today. And that concerns me, okay? But what I will say is, they say behind every great man is a great woman. Kamala Harris, as Anna said, is prepared. She's ready. She's presidential. All right, we'll turn to Kamala Harris in a minute, but to Whoopi's point, and I, I don't even want to address the <laughs> disgusting thing she said, even in jest. Um, look, I think Biden is very close to having demonstrated that he's not um, physically fit for this. It was not, frankly, just the debate performance. It was his performance in recent press conferences where he's confused world leaders. And I, you know, we all misspeak when we're on TV. <laughs> Occasionally it happens. It's happened to me plenty. But this is a different kind of thing. He recalling events involving the wrong world leaders. Um, being He was asked a question at a press conference about negotiations between Israel and Hamas, and he couldn't come up with Hamas. Somebody in the, in the, in the, one of the press reporters had to give that answer looking like he doesn't know where he is, and it's not just manipulated, edited videos, it's as we can, as we now know, um, he has undergone some kind of decline. So to say he's capable of doing the job, is he capable of doing it for four more years? That is just, to me, beyond belief. Like, maybe he's capable now, but I can't imagine what he's gonna be like a year from now. I honestly feel robbed of the election that I think this country really needs which is a referendum on the progressive worldview versus the MAGA worldview, mm -hmm. because I was very excited to find out, you know, how Michigan was going to vote, you know, was yeah. my theory that the auto workers were so put off by the environmental extremism and the EV mandates that they would actually, you know, break for Trump. I mean, these are really important questions about the future of our country and which vision for America is the one that is going to return us to our glory days. Yeah. And I feel a little bit robbed by that because you're right. Now the rest of the race is going to be about whether Biden has, you know, whatever Whoopi Goldberg suggested <laughs> might happen. And none of us are listening to what he's saying. We're all just sort of waiting to see, like, is there, can he make it to the end of the sentence? Did the words all jumble together? Did he make sense? Is he there? I mean, it's all anybody can think about and all anybody can talk about. And I feel robbed of the presidential race that I think this country really needs. That's a good point because it was shaping up, I think, to be more of a policy yeah. um, election. Like, everyone has already decided what they think about Donald Trump personally, if you're voting on personality, your mind has got to be made up by now totally. on Donald Trump, right? No one is coming to this fresh going, that Donald Trump guy, I just don't know very much about him. Is this somebody I could see myself voting for? No, one. this doesn't describe a single voter in America anywhere on earth. No, people are saying, and there are a lot of people saying, well, I don't care for the guy. I maybe would have even liked literally anyone else, but I remember the economy fondly from before COVID, and I don't feel very strongly about the economy now, or I'm concerned about immigration or foreign policy or whatever it is. I mean, foreign policy, I don't even know what Trump really thinks on foreign policy. Does he have differences of opinion with Joe Biden? When he was asked about um, Israel at the debate, they didn't, they didn't get very specific on that. I, I mean, they got a little specific on Ukraine and Europe. I wish they could have been more specific, because you're right, it's now just turned on questions of whether Biden is literally capable of doing the job. Um, so then, okay, let's go to Kamala Harris, uh, who gets, you know, referenced there. I mean, Kamala Harris is polling now slightly better than Biden for the first time in her life, really, for most of the, the, the presidency. She actually polled worse than him. Um, she was not someone that, in my view, ever had a very kind of natural or deep base of support um, anywhere. It was kind of, obviously, she's the first black woman to serve in this role, and that there's a historical quality to that. 
but it, w it actually wasn't clear that she was like so popular among black women and was just kind of assuming that because you look that way you would have a natural affinity for was a little bit uh, of maybe that's very liberal DEI kind of thinking that I'm not sure was being actually borne out by who her supporters really were and what her record is. I mean, she was a not she was a prosecutor. She wasn't a, a Black Lives Matter person until that you know right. became the zeitgeist. So we don't. The bottom line being, we don't really know her, and I think she's a little untested or, or hasn't been tested as much on the national stage as, um, as as maybe we're assuming. But perhaps she would be a more popular and appealing candidate. I mean, talk about not knowing what somebody believes. Yeah. <laughs> or knowing that they don't believe right. anything and, you particularly. Know, honestly, I was going to say that, and I was thinking, you know, it, that's not a terrible thing for a person like Trump who has some sense of what he wants to accomplish. He's a very not ideological person. Yeah, what he wants to accomplish is being president. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but you can get very far with that if you have a kind of vision. But with Kamala, she would simply be a reflection of the deep state and, you know, mm -hmm. what her handlers told her. Because she does not actually have any beliefs or any vision or any real sense of what the country needs. I'm not right? sure she I mean, even has political instincts or, like, like good political instincts. Definitely right? not. I mean, I mean she, she dropped out of the primary for a single <laughs> Right. Cast, right? right. You're going to get. Um, in a way, she's so she's sort of like like Mayor Pete, like kind of like lab grown in this um, identity politics universe yeah. of the progressive movement, which really does not have you know labor at its core anymore, and has replaced it with these kind of signifiers, these honestly upper middle class signifiers, but just glommed onto different identity groups that you know power to them. I think we all yeah. want to see more upper middle class, rich, you know, black women succeeding gay men succeed. I mean, we all want to see mm -hmm. this, right? But they, that is effectively the policy proposal, right? And there's nothing really there for upward mobility for American workers. So I, I really find her to be fascinating because she's such a chimera to me. Like, I couldn't tell you with any certainty what she believes about anything. And in that sense, you know, first of all, I think Trump would love to run against her. I think that would be hilarious. And I, so I, I do think it's anti-democratic to push Biden aside. But if you're going to push him aside yeah. for anyone, it's got to be somebody who's on the ticket. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it is and it isn't. It was anti-democratic how they picked the, the fact that it was coronation. And I, I don't buy the excuse like, oh, the incumbent president, that's just our norm, doesn't really get a serious challenge or a serious competitive primary system. Well, this was not a normal situation because he is far older than anyone ever I, I will say the people who stood up to oppose him in the primary. Yeah. None of these are serious people, and none of them put up a I think serious Dean campaign. Dean Phillips was a, was a serious person. Maybe if they had given him a little more attention, he got yeah. no traction. Where is RFK Jr. right now? Like the fact that his campaign is a joke. Yeah. Like that is the real thing that's been borne Isn't out in the last two a weeks. Joke? Yes, because Why he has that? not picked up any support in the last two weeks. I mean, there's well, another guy in the race, and he has made zero impact at this moment when Biden is cratering. Well, I would say that some of those media forces that we were maligning just a minute ago, I, I think that's some of their responsibility. Um, I mean, you can blame CNN, first of all, for just like not including him in the debate, which I think was, to my mind, was inexcusable. He was polling, they said the threshold was 15% in like four polls. I looked, there was three of them where he's at 14%. And anyway, the, that threshold is entirely arbitrary because they threw out the debate commission rules anyway. Right, but Robbie, the fact that you're making this argument here and he failed to yeah. make it in a convincing no. way to the public is like the problem here. Yeah. Like this is a guy who wants to parade around without a shirt on Instagram and have millions of people watch yeah. it. Like that's what this campaign is. I mean, honestly, who among us, right? But <laughs> no, I, look, I obviously there are some have been some flaws to his media strategy. He's a little too online. He's a little too podcast focused. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, he is certainly drawn. Um, I mean, there's still something positive to say about the most successful um, independent candidate since. Uh, Do you know, you know who the most the independent 90s. candidate? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's Ross Perot. Oh, right. no, I was going to say it's Donald Trump. Oh, well, okay. He's that, running a third-party candidate. As the Republican Party candidate. But he's running a third-party race. Why do you say that? Um, well, we're going to talk about his platform, but if you look at the, the platform mm -hmm. that he has forced the GOP to adopt, um, this is a middle of the road. I mean, so much of what Trump is running on reflects where the Democrats were at in the mm -hmm. 90s, right? Uh, policing the border. Mm -hmm. The Democrats were anti-immigration in the 90s to protect worker wages. He's courting unions. He's courting black voters. He's super pro-gay, right? Yeah. Abortion, 15 weeks. 
This is a third party candidacy. Yeah. All right, we, we're, we're definitely gonna get into this in just a minute. <laughs> Stick around for more free media.